Hello everyone. I don't think it's going to work with me having my phone. <laughs> I was going to stand up today. Uh, let me get some stuff going while everybody's getting in here. I'm Corinne. If you're listening to the replay, you are either on the podcast, Losing 100 Pounds with Fit and Fat, or you're watching the Facebook replay. Um, I'm going to try to find a place where I can stand us up because I really want to talk today about self-care and I want to be standing in attention and ready to go. And I don't think that's going to work either. It's like, I'm so short. All right, let me get my tripod. I really didn't want to have to bust the tripod out today, y'all. And let me just say, when you are a person who's doing Facebook, you are a brave soul to walk around with the camera because very often you're going to be looking down. And I have found that uh, if you would like to know how old you are and every wrinkle in your neck, just put your phone in your lap and then look down. And that will be a really quick lesson on Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I other day I did something. I don't even remember what I was doing. And I had the phone and I was like doing like this. I was like, uh, and I hope my mom's not on here, but maybe I'm, I'm like not throwing you under the bus here. But I was like, oh my God, I've like, I literally looked like my mother. I mean, I just, I've never thought I looked like my mom. And then I was like, holy shit, I look like my mother. So as I'm getting older, I'm really um, learning that I am looking like her more and more and more. Good morning, everyone. Let me get... Thank you, y'all. This is brand new Boston proper. This is a uh, part of the, uh, what the, I think they call it the basics collection. So it's just, it's basically like a really comfy shirt and I am wearing that today. So excited. All right, everyone, we're going to talk about self-care. So I don't talk a ton about self-care, but I, the other day I was talking to the tribe and one of the girls, I, I think Kathy and I did a podcast, I guess it was last week's podcast, we mentioned something about like, how often do you do nice things to yourself? We had some kind of mention of that. And in that podcast, um, the lady came into our tribe and she posted and she said, really made me think because when I was trying to make a list, what I realized was I don't take care of myself. And so I've really been thinking about it and because it's, I think it's like, I was like, what gets in our way? Why is it that we don't take care of ourselves? Why do we think we're not owed being cared for and all this other kind of stuff? And um, I have to take steroids for inflammation. Okay, <laughs> guys, save questions for the end. I should have said that at the beginning. If you will wait to the very end and you're gonna need to use hashtag ask, and then you put your question in, that'll help me, but wait until I ask, um, ask for them. Otherwise, they're gonna get lost in the feed and I won't even, I won't get to them. So just do that. So we were talking about self-care and I was like, so what gets in our way? And so I've really been like just letting it roll around in my head. And I think one of the things that I really wanted to cover today is that we have like a very busted definition as to what self-care is. I think a lot of us, like Kathy and I have done a whole podcast on defining self-care and coming up with ideas. But I wanted to kind of dig deeper into like the three things that get in our way and what it truly can mean. Because I think a lot of us think that if we are um, taking care of ourselves, that somehow like it's going to take all this time and it's this, I don't know, we just have this like this big ass, I think I put, um, there were three main things. I've got, by the way, I just would like everybody to see, there are notes over here happening next to the tripod. In fact, it would look better if I was closer to them so I wouldn't have to look so far over, but um, mama's been throwing this shit together at last minute. So we have the wrong definitions and I came up with the three busted beliefs that we normally have and the things that I want you to think about. So the very first one is that it takes a lot of time. Like somehow self-care means I'm gonna be taking away from other people and it's this huge investment in my time and I'm so busy and I don't have time for it and all this other stuff. And I'm like, okay, that's bullshit. Self-care doesn't take a lot of time. Now, if you're gonna go out and get manicures, pedicures, massages, and all that kind of stuff, that's great. That does take some time. But I was sitting there thinking about this morning, and like, I, so this is a really good example. My brain was going to work on how we're gonna do, um, you know, this talk, and I was sitting in the shower, and I happened to look, and I have two different shower gels that I use. And I've been using one of them that is a, uh, it's like a sugar cookie smell. And I love it, but I've been using it all through the winter and it feels like spring outside right now. Doesn't look like spring, but it feels like spring. And I was like, oh, I wanna use the uh, Pure Grace today. It's like, it smells so light and it smells so fresh and it's, you know, blah, 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 it reminds me of spring. That's self-care. 
for fuck's sake. Like it doesn't have to be a complicated, I need to make an appointment and spend $200. Go get you some shower gel that you like and then each day start your day smelling good. Like self-care guys, like we are making it mean it's going to like take so much time that we end up shitting all over ourselves and we don't even use good smelling soap. Like I have several, I have two different ones by philosophy. I also have a couple of soaps. I have one, I keep Came at my house. I know it's old school. You're probably like, Corinne, you're such an old lady. I am an old lady. It smells like my granny. My granny used Came for years. And so I always keep some Came at my house. And that way when, you know, on days when I want to feel closer to my grandmother and stuff, guess what I do? I bust out that bar of soap and that is self-care. So I'm always thinking about what are the smallest ways to gain self-care? Um, I was listening to um, a really good friend of mine has a podcast. Um, gosh, I can't think of the name of the podcast. I think it's Weight Loss for Physicians in Practice or something like that. But it's Katrina Ubell. She has a good podcast. And she specializes in weight loss for women, uh, practicing women physicians. And she was talking today about one of the things that she loves most. Is she says, I'm a water snob. And I was like, me too. Like part of my self-care is I keep water around that I like. Like I don't just drink out of the, the filter. Like it, there's nothing more lush to me sometimes than having like a refrigerated bottle of Avion on the, on the desk or taking something like a Pellegrino. Other day I made, um, I took a, some Pellegrino and I took like two to three frozen cherries and put it in the bottom and I let it sit for a little bit and then I drank it. It was so good. But it's like little shit like that that we don't even like think about that could be really up-leveling just our mood and our day and our moments. And it would help so much. I'm gonna tell you, someone who has suffered from depression, guys, if you have anxiety or depression, you need to be looking in the margins for your little bits of happy. I keep essential oils at my house. I burn them. I have certain ones that the day that I feel really productive or the day I feel really good or something, I make note, and then when I want to gin that shit up, guess what I do? I burn them damn oils. Like, think about the little things that you could be doing. And also, here's the, here's the key. A lot of times, we're doing some of those things, and we keep telling ourselves over and over and over again that we don't have time for self-care. We focus so much on the beatdown of the world, how much the world's taken from us. We have to do this. We have to do that. And I'm like, you have so many things that you probably are doing for yourself. It's like, put a little focus over there and you won't feel like shit all the time. Like, watch where your brain wants to go. If it wants to feel the crap, it will for fuck sure find the crap. It's your job though, to not keep going there. Find little bitty things. Amber, are you one of my girls? Because we've been 1% in it. We are like, all of us have been thinking about 1%, 1%, 1% inside of PNP Tribe. We are like the 1%. What, did you, what do we call it? The 1% club or the 1% something or other? It's like, we are all about trying to up-level our lives one little percent at a time because it adds up. It's like a big thing that the tribe's doing right now. We're doing a self-accountability course. We're all working on our shit. All right, number two. So the first one is like, we don't have time. It's like, no, you got time. And here's all the little things you can do. The next one is the unfancy is the best. Kind of plugs into what I was just talking about. Like doing all those little things don't take a lot of time and they're not fancy. Like the way I like to think about it, PMP Tribe, September Baby Ambercon. <laughs> I knew that when one of my 1% clubs come in, that there must be one of my girls. The unfancy is always the best. Always. I'm not saying that like going and doing big things isn't great. But I, so this was like me when I was a kid. My brother, he always wanted like a big gift for Christmas. And I was like, no, I want like 30 presents under the tree. And we were broke. So in order to have 30 presents, I'm sure my mom was like at the dollar store getting them. But there was just something awesome about having little things. And I totally get this from my mom. My mother, she loves nothing but to go but to a thrift store. She loves going and getting like little bits of happy. And I'm the same way. I just, I don't go to the thrift store to get it. I just go to my life and I find little bits of happy. Sometimes taking five minutes to just read a book. Hey, Mammy. My mom's in here. Yep. <laughs> 
Sometimes it's taking like five minutes when I'm just like stressed out and just be like, I'm going to grab a book or I'm going to listen to five minutes of a podcast. It's so much better than just sitting around thinking about how much you have to do. It's like, here's the deal with all of you with overwhelm. If you're going to freaking sit there and think about how much you have to do and not do anything, you might as well plug in a little bit of happy and listen to five minutes of some music, listen to five minutes of me bitching at you, listen to five minutes of something rather than sitting around thinking about all the things you have to do. It's like, don't waste your time. Sitting around thinking about shit, guys, gets nothing accomplished. So, like, look for the unfancy. Look for the little things. Like, um, guys, I self-tan a lot. There's nothing more than I love than getting out my Josie Marin. I did it today. I was like, working my tan. I love, like, just getting it on. Like, lotioning. I try to find all the little things that I'm like, this is how I care for myself. And I'm going to wrap this up about how it applies to weight loss at the end. So be prepared. But the best thing about that I think that self-care does. So like if you like start, you know, letting go of the idea that you don't have time and you start adding in all the unfancy. The one thing that I know blocks most of you from self-care is you do not think you're worth it. You have a huge story around I'm not good enough. I'm not worth it. Um, it's just all the bullshit that goes on with it. Because, like, at the core, we know that including this stuff is not complicated. But so many of you will be hesitant and you won't do it. And a lot of it will come from the idea that you don't deserve it. Like, and I really want you guys just to be honest if that's where you're at with it. The reason why doing these things anyway and thinking about it and re engineering it, the best reason of all is because it is the best way to teach yourself how to value, make time for yourself, how to like think differently about you, how to raise your self-esteem, how to raise your own level of self-worth without looking for it externally. It's when you start giving yourself little hits of joy because the problem with most of us is that we're giving ourselves little hits of joy from food and it has a terrible result with it. It comes with lowering our self-esteem because we weren't really giving ourselves long-term pleasure. We were just trying to get through the moment. And there's a big difference between getting through the moment and then actually investing in yourself and thinking about all the little places and the little 1% and the things that you can be doing to like re-engineer how you think about you and your life and you deserving things. So like I wanted to give you guys just like several of the little like self carry things that I do um, today. I want like I just literally wanted to get dressed up before the the live. Most of the time I come like steamrolling in from a workout and I look you know kind of haintish. Uh, today I was just like I just want to look pretty today. Like I just want to go for the rest of my day smelling good and I want to take a shower and all this other stuff. So I made sure that my ass this morning, like I listened to my podcast and stuff while I worked out today, rather than just sitting and enjoying them and listening to them so that I could get my shower and I could get ready and stuff. There's nothing more than I love than to just like sit around and work in clothes that are comfortable but stylish. Like I just think about stuff like that. And it's not because I lost weight. It's because when I was losing weight, one of the things when I first started noticing was how I just didn't really care for myself anymore at all. And so when I was losing weight, one of the things that I wanted to do was start creating joy in my life away from food. And I had to work really hard at it because so I didn't have any. I was sitting around probably in postpartum depression hell, only thinking about how my life was just like, and I know this sounds terrible being a mom, but I can remember sitting around looking at Logan and he just, you know, like I was just so tired and so overweight and thinking my life was over. And I was like 30. My life hadn't even begun. But I felt that way. Like life just felt so heavy for me. Not only physically, but just mentally. And I had to start figuring out little ways to take care of myself. And so when I was losing weight, I tried to think about all the small changes that I was making with my food all the little walks that I was doing, all the little things that I did. Guys, if you're new to me and you don't know what my story is, go to my podcast, Losing 100 Pounds with Fit and Fat, episode one. 
I will tell you my story. It was like, I'm just like all of you and you will figure out how I lost my weight. I did not do a lot of magic pills and shakes and I didn't have weight loss surgery and I didn't like, I didn't have a guru, I didn't have anything. I just really had a desire to get out of my shithole that I had created for myself. And I was not gonna do it like the way I had always done it with tricks and gimmicks and restrictions. I just couldn't do that anymore. So for me, it was like the ultimate form of self-care was looking at the little things that I could improve in my life and then associating those little things that I can improve like showers, like investing in a soap that smells good, like deciding I'm going to keep eating ice cream, I'm just not eating out of my carton anymore and start looking at all of that stuff as like self-care. This is how I'm going to create the best version of me. This is how I'm going to move forward. This is what's going to make me healthier. This is what's going to break obesity in my family. Like all of those things. I had to really start making my brain think like that because all it wanted to do was think about how, well, you'd never lost weight before. I don't know why you think this could be any different. It's like I had all those shitty thoughts, every single one of them. I just also countered it with new ones that really cared for my mental hygiene and really cared for the direction and the goals that I wanted to go into. So that's why I'm like, guys, I don't care what size you are. If you ever want to lose your weight and be able to keep it off, you have to learn how to start loving your process all the way down. And it's going to start with little hits of self-care. It doesn't require you to invest a lot of money and it doesn't require you to invest a lot of your time. It doesn't require you to shit all over your family. Like I got to put me first and be selfish. The best way to bastardize self-care is to associate you taking care of you as selfish. No, your brain is going to be like, why are we doing that? We're harming people when you care for yourself. When you take care of you, it's just like, it's just little things that I'm doing. This isn't hurting anyone. It's just doing little things for me. So those are the things I want you to think about. All right, now's the time to start asking questions. While we do that, I like, I have some little shout outs from the groupies that I would like to do. I gotta get, um, like, if, I feel like we're traveling today. It's like the uh, travel with me day. Let me pull up where I have them. Cause we have, oh, sorry. I didn't realize you guys couldn't see me. We're gonna, um, it's gonna be amazing if I can actually see this cause it's way over here. We have, um, whoops, that's not shout outs. Well, let me find the shout outs. Oh, I'm on the wrong damn page. No wonder, I'm like, these are not shout outs. I don't know what they're posting. Cassandra Pierce, non-scale victory. I had ice cream at the self-checkout, not in my plan today, and left the line to put it back. Way to go, Cassandra. And then we have Tracy Denise. I had a real aha moment this weekend that nearly brought me to tears. Uh, I went on a weekend road trip with a friend and we planned to eat Chick-fil-A. We don't have one where I live. We went and I ordered my planned meal. Halfway through, I said, I'm full and y'all stopped eating. I've never in my adult life, um, she is, uh, she said it was reason 2,748 that made it, that got her to uh, 390 pounds. I not only felt better by not being stuffed, but I felt so in control of my life, reactions, and choices. Thanks for listening. So very, congratulations, Miss Tracy. And then let's do one more, and then I'll start answering questions. We have, um, oh my gosh, Sandra Weber, who made it under 200 pounds for the first time since she was 12 years old. Praise hands. Let me just tell you, I remember in the eighth grade weighing 210. And like, I remember when I was losing weight, when I started like somewhere way, like guys, I always say 250, but I'm going to guarantee you because I was afraid to weigh in. It was probably more than that. But, oh my gosh, when I finally made it to 200, I was naked and I was dancing in the bathroom. I mean, like there is nothing sweeter than when the two turns into the one. <laughs> Uh, and there's like one other, um, Megan, uh, I cannot say this last name. It starts with a Z. So you'll know who you are. Uh, found PNP late December, worked on 24 hour plans 
Um, even when she didn't feel like it, drink water. She's been journaling, she's been listening to podcasts, and she is down 14 pounds. So I just wanted to give a few shout outs to my little groupies. You guys are um, over there hanging out in our free Facebook group. If you want to be a groupie, you have to go to pnp411.com. You have to sign up for the free course. Once you take the free course and you do some work, then you get invited to the groupies because I want the groupies to be full of people who actually want to be there and they want to do the work. All right, let's see, ask. Um, hello, my girls. Let's start with, if I, I'm starting with Nicole, if I didn't, um, if I don't, if, if it's before, oh wait, here we go. Let's start with Dan, uh, Dania. Hi, Corinne. So I've worked on drinking as um, not being a way to connect with my boyfriend, but he still believes that's how we connect. Any advice on how to handle this? Yeah, just go and don't drink and connect with him. You're gonna have to prove it through action and let him see it happen. That's his mindset. You don't have to change his mindset, but the best thing you can do is just model that it'll be fine. Like just go and be the same old person and stuff. Um, He's having a hard time with saying that I'm changing. You are changing. He's right. Here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to expect him to not think you're changing. What you want him to do is be like, you're changing and it's even better. So show him the better version. Uh, I don't know who's... Uh, Tiffany Johnston. My answer ain't keto. <laughs> she said everybody's answer seems to be keto. No. Uh, let's see. What are your tips for learning what hungry and full feel like? I feel like I've been overeating so long, I'm not sure what it's supposed to feel like. Best tip that I the, the tribe does when we do hunger scale challenge week and stuff is uh, eat half your meal, then you'll quickly find it out. Just eat half, throw the rest away, and then you'll know. And also, if you don't know what hungry is, you're not waiting. Just keep waiting. For some of you who have a lot of weight to lose, the first few times you do that, you could wait a day. And the worst part of it won't be that you're, you're going to be like, I should be eating. I should be eating. I'm killing my metabolism. It's like, no, you have stored calories. Your metabolism can't tank until you have weeks and weeks and weeks of not eating. A couple of days of waiting until your body gets hungry never tanked anybody's metabolism. Um, if you want to become a groupie and you've already done my course, just uh, email PNP support. Wait a minute. Support at pnptribe.com. Email us over there and tell them that you want um, an invitation to the groupies. Um, let's see. How is your New Year's resolution goal of boom, boom, twice a week going? Well, Karen, I had it last night, if that says anything. <laughs> uh, I, I love how you guys ask me these questions while my mother's watching. Just everyone know Anna Harrison, right? That is my mother. Y'all don't ask about the boom, boom. <laughs> Not when Mammy's on. What is the best way to apply all my wants? in the moment and choose what I really want versus what I want in the moment. You need to have what you really want written down and then every time you look at like M&Ms and you want those in the moment, you need to get that other shit out and read it, like for five minutes. Just give yourself like say, if I still want the M&Ms after five minutes and I've been reading this and thinking on it, I can have them. But you're gonna have to have a pattern interrupt and you're gonna have to have a way for you to remind yourself of what you ultimately want. Here's the other thing, most of you think about weight loss in a very passive way. Like, yeah, I really want to lose weight. And then you'll like kind of daydream about it a little bit. You'll think about when you first wake up in the morning and whatnot. But you're not really actively thinking about it. There's a difference between passive wanting it and actively thinking on it. Actively thinking on it is writing about that shit every single day. About how bad I want it, what I'm willing to do today, here's how I'm going to get it done, making my plan. Like, that's active thinking on it and getting that shit done. And then do that shit again at night. It's a lot of writing, but guys, there's such a power. The more you write, the more shit gets done. A lot of you just want to sit there and you want to like stew and overwhelm about your weight and stuff because you're just always thinking about food and whatnot. And I'm like, quit thinking about it, write a plan and get busy. And it does not have to be a perfect plan. For those of you who are newer to me, I do not have you make crazy ass plans that are restrictive and stuff. Go listen to the podcast to figure out what I'm talking about. Take the free course to figure out what I'm talking about. But the deal is, is that like if you want to lose weight, you have to work for it. And most of the work is you being willing to write, 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 plan, 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 and do those things rather than just 
sitting around and letting it roll around in your head all the time. Um, let's see. Top tips to start. I'm a newbie and have about 100 pounds to lose and very strict budget and a busy schedule. So since you have a very strict budget, the best tip is to go listen to the podcast. Seriously. Start with number one and push play. Binge out on it. Like, if you have a busy schedule, then let that shit play passively in your ear while you work. Do like me. I listen to shit in the shower. Like, I have a big ass schedule too. This morning, I've already listened to two podcasts and part of an audio book because I'm listening while I'm showering, while I'm putting on makeup. If I'm on the toilet, you better believe earbuds are in. I don't waste time at all. Like, most of us who are busy are saying it and we don't even realize that we have time. I never call myself busy. I'm very well planned though. Very well planned. Like I have in my journal the times when I'm like, when you're showering, listen to this podcast or put in a podcast, finish this book. Like I go through at least two books a week and probably 10 podcasts a week. And I don't just sit around and read all the time. I'm just getting it done in the margins. What else do you do for self-care looking for ideas? Why don't everybody in here plug in what they do for self-care? Sometimes I just go outside and I just sit for 10 minutes in the sun, like just to get a break. So many of us are sitting around thinking about all the shit we have to do and we're not actually like giving ourselves little breaks. Good hand lotion. I keep really tasty, like I have this, um, I bought this, it's called Lip Slip by Sarah Happ. I exfoliate my lips every single morning while I'm in the shower. It's this blueberry sugar scrub, best stuff ever, keeps my lips good. I love doing that. Um, I do like a, like a lot of times at night, I listen to focus music. I, my husband and I have recently started giving up television at night to just do reading together in bed. Sometimes we even hold hands when we do it. Sometimes we even have boom, boom and skip the reading. I do a lot, like a lot of my self-care, there's nothing I love better than planning. I love just sitting down and just knowing what I'm gonna do for the day. I just think it's the best gift I give myself. I think about it as self-care and then I do that. I'm new to your site and would, have, would like you to explain your two and two. I've heard you refer to it a few times. Go to the podcast. Um, if any of my coaches or mentors are on here, can we put them in touch? There is podcasts that talk all about it. It's basically the easy way is you're going to eat when you're hungry, physically, and you're going to stop when you're satisfied. That's the trick, and that's it. Congratulations, Miss Leslie, who has done her 24-hour plan every day for 52 days. This is, everybody keeps talking about my lip color. This is a blend of, it's a really hot pink underneath um, by Marc Jacobs. It's just like a lipstick. And then on top is a velvet matte from Huda that is a very dark berry. And I just blended them today. And I think they do look good. <laughs> um, how did I come up with the name Fit and Fat on the couch? Uh, just, I, I think I've told this story before in the podcast, but basically I wanted to come up with a name and I really idolized this chick who, um, she had these things called fat camp, pretty hot and tempting fat camps, right? We'd go and work out for like three days and come home and you couldn't move. And I just loved them. Like I wore, uh, she had, she was really into pink camo and bling. And so like I had this like phase where I had these blinged out bandanas I would wear and all kinds of stuff. And so when we were trying to come up with um, the name, I loved putting the word fat in there. And then uh, I came up with fit because I had never been anybody who ever exercised a day in their life, played sports or anything. And I had fell in love with exercising for the first time in my life. And I felt like I'd gotten fit. So I wanted to be called fit and fat. Uh, if you guys will go to pnp411.com, that's where you find the free course. Uh, let's see. What is your Peloton leaderboard name? Yes, I'm a Peloton girl. I am PNP Tribe Queen. If you want to friend me, we'll follow you back. 
I've been thinking, I bet I would love it if I had a way to connect with everyone where we could get together and do workouts at a certain time. I'm really wanting the swarm badges and stuff. <laughs> they have badges for however many people you can get together. Um, but I don't, I don't know how you like notify all your people to say like, Ooh, this is when I'm going to work out. It'd be kind of cool if we could do it. Um, morning from Chicago. I'm feeling so confused. Um, I love, so this is somebody who follows my mentor. This is Renee. Uh, I love Brooke's pro uh, approach to weight loss, but I'm feeling confused about her strict approach to food and your more relaxed approach to food. Uh, I realize that it's up to me to create my own protocol, but I'm worried about doing it wrong. There's no doing it wrong. Even Brooke, I mean, even Brooke says all the time, like Brooke knows I don't do no sugar, no flour, and I'm a master weight loss coach in her mastermind. It's not a matter of right and wrong. It's a matter of your result line. So since you're in scholars, you know what the result line is. You need to just test. It's no different than anything else we do. Come up with your protocol that you want get busy with it, honor it. Like, and a protocol, guys, is just where you just decide what you're gonna put on your plans. That's it. That's all the protocols. We make it so it sounds like such a big fucking deal. It's not a big fucking deal. It's like, here's what I'm gonna eat today. And I'm gonna eat that. And then I'll either lose weight or I won't. And if I'm not losing weight, I need to tweak that until I'm losing weight. That's all that has to happen. Let's see. How do you keep yourself going with your journey? I feel like I'm a repeated offender. Well, that's probably part of the problem. If you feel like you're an offender rather than like, I give up so easily and lose that drive and then it's a downward spiral. I just like, I don't think drive is lost. I think what happens is, is what I notice, the difference between my girls that lose weight consistently and those who don't, they have the exact same amount of mistakes, they have the exact same amount of overeats, and they have the exact amount of problems and things that they have to overcome. And it's always the same shit. Always the same shit. The difference between those who keep going and those who stop is the ones that keep going are always trying to figure out how to fix those things. So that when they have an overeat, they don't go to, this is the end of the world, there's something wrong, I'm a repeat offender, I must be off track life is ending. They're like, okay, so what am I going to do next time? What do I need to learn from this? Let me write about it. Let me figure it out. What kind of shitty thoughts am I having? Because that's the stuff I know that is not helpful. Like I'm just having thoughts. I'm not believing them. Against the other girls who are just like, you know, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this again. I'm never going to get it because there's like this mindset somewhere deep down in your diet mentality that if you're not doing it right, you must be doing it wrong. And I'm like, if you're not doing it right, you just haven't found the right combination yet. That's it. That's the big difference between those two mindsets. So you don't lose momentum. You don't lose drive. You don't lose any of that stuff because you don't start sitting around thinking shit wide things about going. If you want to keep up momentum, you have to have momentous thoughts about your mistakes. Momentous thoughts about you know, every problem that happens, every obstacle that you come up on, that's all. This did start at 8.30. There were, I think Facebook had something wonky going on, guys, because like we only had like 100 people on for a long time and then all of a sudden, boom, we hit 600 to 700. Why did it, why did it take you to lose 100 pounds to like yourself? It didn't take 100 pounds to lose to like myself. I learned how to like myself on the way down. I started not liking myself and I realized that on the way down, I was going to need to start liking myself in order to lose 100 pounds. I didn't lose 100 pounds and be like, oh shit, yeah, this is great. Now I like myself. That is not the way it happens. What I see most people do is they insist on hating themselves all the way down and then when they lose 100 pounds, they've practiced hating themselves so much, they're mystified as to why the world's not better. Like if you're used to nitpicking yourself and you're used to putting yourself last and you just white knuckled and figured out a way to lose weight without really learning how to like, oh wait, I don't talk so nice to myself. I should probably clean that up. Oh wait, I don't take care of myself with self-care and stuff. I should probably fix that. I wasn't doing any of that when I first started and I had to learn how to do it from the fucking get-go. You don't lose a hundred pounds and suddenly fall in love with yourself. If you have shitty thoughts about your body, guess what comes along for the ride in your new thin body? Your shitty ass thoughts. 
You figure out a way, like I, this is the, what I see most people do. Like you'll lose weight and you'll still either nitpick your body or if your brain has to have a problem, you know what your brain will do? You're probably gonna get this weight back. Like I know you were able to lose it, but you're not happy all the time. So it didn't fix that. So now what? Now what are we gonna do? So then you create a weight problem again to get maniacally focused on so that you're never really addressing the real problem in the room, which is the relationship you have with yourself. So Dana, that's the answer. Is it possible to not know what hunger feels like since I've been ignoring it for so long? Yeah, that's why you just wait. You just wait. And that is the hardest part. The hardest part of understanding what your hunger is, is allowing yourself to have hunger because every silly thought that you have about it is going to be loud because you're not eating. What quiets the chatter is the food. Unless you're willing to listen to what your brain says, like, oh my God, you're killing your metabolism. Oh my God, like everybody else is eating and you're not. They're all gonna think that there's something weird about you. Oh, everybody notices. Oh, there's the fat girl having a, going on another diet. Like your brain will go to all that bullshit and you're gonna hear it. You're used to turning all those thoughts off with food and now you're gonna listen to them. And that's super uncomfortable most of the time. But I just invite all of you to let those thoughts come in and just be like, okay, but we're still gonna wait until we're hungry. Like, I want us to start understanding that when we have sentences running through our brain, they're not that big a deal. We make them seem so big. But the thing is, is they're just sentences. I don't think a lot of us even realize that that's even what happens. And so we get very afraid of it. It's like, it's normal. It's just normal. What do you recommend on weighing every day once a week? I weigh every day now, and the only reason is we have got this new scale that uh, tracks it in our apps, and my husband wanted this fancy pants scale that, like, you know, I think it's the Withings. I, I think we have the Withings. I'm not 100% sure which one we have, but uh, I've been telling everybody this here lately. My favorite part, I am such a weirdo about the weather. Like, I'm always obsessed about how cold it is outside or how warm it is outside, what, what's happening outside, and rather than just going outside, I get on the scale now. And I just like bated breath, wait to see what the weather is. What's today's high? What's the temperature right now? Like, I just think that's amazing. But you can weigh however much you want. The problem isn't like, do you weigh every day or do you weigh once a week or whatever? The issue is, are you a healthy weigher? Are you someone who can get on there and use that information to make sure that you're making good choices and setting yourself up for success for the day? Or do you get on there and use it as a way to like bash yourself as a way to like throw panic and fear into the streets as a way to do those things. So like I have my girls, they only weigh in on Fridays because that is the trend I like to see. Just kind of make some, and I have them answer questions around it so that they can build a healthier relationship with the scale. Can you explain joy day versus food rewards? Um, joy day we don't do joy days in my group we don't have like cheat days or cheat like whatever we just you just plan exception and we don't do food rewards either like i y'all ain't dogs seriously quit rewarding yourself with food i think we did a podcast on it might have been last week's podcast or the week before i talk about don't reward your ass with food unless you want to set yourself up for like thinking okay well when i'm good i get food so every time i do something good now i get to eat it's a terrible way to set up the system um, if somebody's in here and, uh, if someone will post whatever, I cannot remember the name of that podcast and which number it is, what the podcast is for, um, the one on food rewards. It was a really good one. Every time I lose weight, I feel accomplished and then get complacent. How do you resist resting on your laurels and slacking off plans? The best way to do it is just keep making plans. Don't allow yourself to not keep planning. And then when you feel accomplished, the next thing you do is you ask yourself, what's the next best thing I can do? Where's my level up? Like, 
celebrate your accomplishment in your brain also like reinforce all the things that are going right like doing a lot of work around like like writing down and here's all the things I'm doing that's making this accomplishment possible that's making these feelings possible that way your brain isn't like just been like oh boy now let's go party <laughs> Can you explain good, better, best? I listen to the podcast, but I'm still not sure how to apply it to my food choices. You just like literally don't overcomplicate it. A good food choice would be um, like a portioned amount of potato chips. A better choice would to level up to some baked lays. A best choice would to switch out to carrots and hummus. That could be one. For some people who aren't eating real potato chips, your good might be the baked lays. Your level up might be um, switching over to, I don't know, like anything that you want. Like maybe you're going to do um, like healthy crackers and guacamole. And then your best would be a side salad now with your sandwich or something. So those are some of the ideas. But there's no like, there's no hard and fast rules. The What you're missing probably is the spirit of the rules, which is... It's you practicing looking at your foods and evaluating them and then seeing what's the 1% better I can be doing. And then what is the next level up from there? So that your brain starts seeing where all of the level ups go. Like you're not gonna go to best automatically. You're gonna be like, oh, I can see the letters. And let me just tell you, a lot of foods, you'll be able to have very like several versions of good, better, best. Like for me, when I first started, my good was eating ice cream out of a hard, big bowl. My good was going to a smaller bowl of ice cream. My best was when I measured the ice cream and had a true serving. Not one time did I eat a different ice cream or interject fruit or do anything like that. That was my first round of good, better, best. And then guess what? My measured bowl of real ice cream became my good. And then I had a better and then I had a best. So that's the way you think about it. Let's see. I'm reading Atomic Habits. Thanks for yet another gift for my brain and realizing there is so much more I can do. Thoughts on how to prioritize everything. One of the things that I do that I was actually talking to someone else about this morning is I make a list of things that like all the ideas I have and then I highlight the ones, like I'll circle them. I do a lot of stuff on a flip chart or on a whiteboard. Um, I circle the easiest ones to start and then I number them and then I do one. And then I don't, and I just write them all down then in order. And I don't allow myself to pick another one until that one's been mastered. And then I pick the next one. And then I pick the next one. And then I pick the next one. Let's see. I am a PMP member. This is KN. Uh, but I only did two lessons. I feel so left behind from the group I joined with. Um, Maybe a September baby. <laughs> okay, I was like trying to read your hashtag. I was like, what does that say? You're not behind. We don't have timelines on our courses. There are a lot of people who were on the first two courses. And we don't have groups anymore. Like, this is what I want you to think about. You're like, I miss my group. Listen to the accountability. Go, I, here's what I want you to do, KM. On Monday night, I did a class for self-accountability where I explained getting accountability groups and how to like start them and all this other stuff. I want you to listen to that video. It is, uh, it's Monday night's replay. So if you go to the private member podcast, you can pull it up there. Or if you just log in to pnptribe.com, I want you to go to bonuses. At the very bottom of the screen, you should see self-accountability program. It's called Mastering Self-Accountability or Mastering Accountability. And then I want you to watch it will be the, um, it's the replay of Monday night. So I think it's called Accountability uh, Workshop. If one of my people are in here, like if I have a coach or someone who's here, now is the time to link into this uh, Facebook right now where KN can hit the link or message her with the link so she can go and see exactly what I'm talking about right now. I want you to watch that. And then I want you to find an accountability group. If Mary Jo is working, um, I don't know if you're on Mary Jo. If not, I'm sure one of the coaches are or one of the mentors will let um, Mary Jo know. Let's find her an accountability group that is strong 
that they can help her move through the no BS success path. But I want you to listen to that one first because we talk about the self-accountability, KN. Then we'll just get you dialed in and plugged in. I mean, you literally can be plugged in in like an hour. That's how easy it is in PNP Tribe. You sitting around feeling left behind means you're sitting around thinking about it. Guess what you're not doing? You're not doing, okay? How do you get past the need to feel full during and before your period? You write about it. You need to write about it before your period hits. Here's the thing. We always think that like, our, like, like oh, it, don't let it be a shock. If you know that's a problem, then before your period, guess what you need to do? Plan for that problem and how you're going to overcome it rather than sitting around going, I know I'm going to want to feel full. Well, that's a problem. And then you don't do anything. Solve it. Come up with a solution. So how do you get past the need? You write about it. You think, all right, I'm going to want to feel full because I'm on my period and that's okay because we're not going to do it anyway. Or I need to plan foods that give me a feeling of full, like I, it's vegetable time when I'm on my period. Like I start with a big hearty salad so that I'm not like searching out junk everywhere. Like, work within the system. I'm never going to get on to y'all for loading up on some vegetables so that you can stay out of shit. Um, the name of my podcast is Losing 100 Pounds with Fit and Fat. It's in the top. Oh, my God, y'all. I had the most amazing dream last night. So, y'all know that my dream is to meet Oprah and have lunch with Oprah. And um, very often, Oprah and I are very close in the Apple iTunes ratings because we're like a we're like a top fifty podcast in all of iTunes. And a lot of times, I see this Oprah stuff. So I've been thinking about Oprah a lot lately. I dreamed about Oprah last night. She and I were doing a marathon together, but we were walking, and we had to take these breaks each night. And we were like sharing a room. And at one point, she was like, "I just." I heard that everybody was telling me that you're the one to talk to about weight loss. And she came up and just gave me this big hug. And I was like, yes, Oprah, I'm going to help you. I just, But I told her something about how I just want you to know I cuss a lot. <laughs> just, it's the craziest dream. Do you think listening to the podcast in order is the best way to learn? Or should we focus on known trouble areas in our lives that have podcasts? I don't think there's any way you could go wrong. Whether you listen to them in the trouble areas or you listen to them in order, it's fine. If you want to know a little bit about me, I would start with number one and two, and then I just start picking stuff. Or if you're like an order girl, just go in order. There's no wrong or right. Some of my favorite podcasts, I just sent an email out about that this week. Um, I love Take a Break. With Rachel Hart, it's a drinking podcast for business. I love Gary V. Guys, he just has good stuff, whether it's business or you just want to get pumped up, motivated. It's Gary V-E-E, -E, Vaynerchuk, but just V-E-E. -E, it's the Gary V. In fact, I listened to him this morning. Uh, I really like listening to The Life Coach School with uh, Brooke Castillo. That's my mentor. Um, another business one that I really like is Amy Porterfield's Online Marketing Made Easy. It's a really good one. Um... I also like, gosh, well, I always want to grab my phone. Uh, I listen to Lewis Howes some. I, I listen to his short ones, not his long ones. I typically like his short motive. Um, he calls them Five Minute Fridays. I really like those. I also listen to Brendan Burchard a lot. Um, I listen to, uh, for productivity, I really like The One Thing. It's really good. Um, and I like Ray Edwards' show. It's kind of Christian-based, but it's good also. Um, those are just some of my favorites. I listen to a wide range of different, all kinds of different podcasts. Let's see. I'm going to scroll down. There's a bunch of self-care stuff. Y'all did very well. Y'all are still doing very well with the self-care stuff. Somehow we have talked all day about self-care, essential oils, and my boom boom life. <laughs> and my mother. <laughs> Can you talk about the difference between a joy meal and a joy day? Uh, we've already talked about this one. Uh, I don't do joy days. We just like, you plan your exception and then you enjoy the fuck out of it and you move on. Um, 
Will somebody tell Lisa Sloan what podcast number is the one with little quits? I have a ton about little quits. So anything that's going to, what I would do is I would listen to anything that has to do with mistakes. There's several that have to do with mistakes. Hey, Mary. Is it okay to eat only, to eat one meal a day if you're not hungry? Yeah, if you're not hungry, then don't eat, guys. Um, I bring things for my planned breakfast and lunch and then I'm not hungry for any of it. Part of me worries that I'm not getting enough nutrients, but I'm not hungry, so I don't eat. I'm following two to two. Most of the day, I'm pretty neutral. Um, I'm down 125 pounds and in the PMP tribe. Um, I would just, just keep rolling with it. If you're not hungry, you're not hungry. Just what I would do though is on the days where you're feeling like very neutral, like really listen to your body. If you're continuing to lose weight and you need to lose weight and you're losing it one to two pounds a week, everything's fine. If you're losing still like three and four pounds and stuff, I probably would just really pay super close attention to make sure that you're not thinking that you're not hungry and you've just gotten used to being hungry. That can happen sometimes when we get on a big roll with weight loss. So it's really gonna depend for you because you're down 125 pounds at this point. It's gonna depend for you on how much more weight you wanna lose, um, at what rate are you losing at this point, that kind of stuff. What is your energy level? You know, are you needing to slug caffeine to have energy and stuff all the time? You know, that is stuff, Mary, ask in the tribe if any of that seems like it might be a miss. I would ask this in the tribe and I would tag us coaches in it and let us come in and talk about it. Or you can take it over to ask coaches on pnptribe.com and then list out like what you are eating, where you are with your weight loss and where you want to like how much more weight you need to lose, if you need to lose any more, all that kind of stuff. If you put it all in ask coaches, you can give a very detailed um, like like all the stuff and then they can give you a very detailed response as to next best steps, what to pay attention to and all that kind of stuff. What am I supposed to be putting in my journal, the 24 pl hour plan, what is that? Uh, if you're a tribe member, you know exactly what goes in there because we have a planner for you. But you're supposed to put your your 24 hour plan is what you're gonna eat for the next 24 hours. I would recommend, Sylvia, that you go listen to the podcast. If you listen to my podcast, I have one on the 24 hour plan, what it is and what you do. Um, if you haven't listened, if you haven't taken my free course, it's also in there. It talks about planning in there. So if you go to pnp411.com, you actually will get a workbook that goes along with it. I would highly recommend you start with that. It also gets you on the mailing list so that um, I send out motivational emails every Monday that talk about like different things when it comes to diet mindset. And then on Fridays, I always send out the podcast email that not only talks about like what we're doing in the podcast, but like just some like, here's how I handled things back in the day and here's how I've changed. It's kind of like one of those things where I want you to understand like, I totally get where you're coming from. So I'm not just like blowing smoke up your ass when I talk about how to do things. Like I don't tell you guys to do shit that I don't believe in or that I haven't done myself or that I don't have thousands of women who have lost weight doing it. So um, make sure you get on that free course. It's pnp411.com. All right, everyone, that's it for this week. Y'all have an amazing one. It is um, so beautiful here. I So here's my self-care for the day. All the windows in the house are getting open to let in all the fresh air. Luau is gonna love me more than anything. He will run from window to window, smacking and hunting birds. And then um, I'm gonna burn some oils also. I'm burning wild orange and lemon today because I love the citrus stuff when I'm gonna be working and it just smells so fresh and airy. I'm also going to have a big cup of coffee because I haven't had it yet today. And then I'm gonna be switching over to water. So for me, besides my shower where I put all my Josie Marin and my smell good philosophy stuff on, that's the way I'm taking care of Corinne today. So y'all have a great one. See you soon. Bye y'all.